Well, it's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond. This is episode number 782 for December 20th, 2023. And I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. This week, our guest is Bart Bouchatz with Programming Myself in Small Event 158, where we continue our journey with JQ. And in an odd series of events, what you might hear in the background is rain at my house. <gasps> it is our- It is dumping out there. Wow. Well, do you need some? Is it too dry? I think it rained in February. Well, okay. Maybe March. Well, maybe the other so, yeah, river will, will be a river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, kind, of, kind of different for us. As you described it, you said we call that Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I got quite wet today. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So. All right. Where are we going today, Bart? We are. Today is kind of a pause and gather our thoughts-ish sort of an episode. So. I said to you in the big picture that JQ has three big jobs in life. It has pretty printing Jason, which was very easy. And we did that in the first installment. That didn't take us any time at all. And then I said we can use it to pull information out of um, Jason files. And so we started off by just pulling sort of data by its address, you know, go into the array, find the first element, go in there, grab me the value that matches the key named waffles or whatever. And so we were specifying a specific address within the data set to go and pull out something. And then last time, we met a whole bunch of concepts and we had to do a lot in one episode. And I I believe I told you that one of those concepts would be the most difficult thing in the entire series and that it's all downhill from here, which I hope you find reassuring. Um, But we had to learn about operators. We actually, we had to start by learning about how we express data as literals, which is the same rules we use for JSON. So basically you have uh, booleans, you have numbers, you have strings, you have null as a special thing, and then you have arrays and dictionaries, as we call them. And then we went on to look at operators, which do something with, you know, something on the left, something on the right, and they do something to produce something else. And then we looked at functions and how if they don't take any arguments, you just use the name of the function and you don't have to bother with any brackets. If it takes one argument, you just wrap that one argument in brackets. And then we learned that if you have multiple arguments, you have to separate them with a semicolon. And you joked that you're going to get this wrong all the time. And I said, not I will, I do. Uh, (laughs) And that that is true. While I was working on today's show notes, I ended up making some very naughty words for a while and not understanding why my thing wasn't working. And then I realized I had a comma instead of a semicolon. And that makes a very big difference because the semi did happen to you good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because the comma, of course, is the and also operator, not the second argument operator. They are very different things. Second argument versus and also. Uh, And then we learned about the amazing select function for letting us filter our data, basically search for things based on straightforward conditions. Is it equal to this? Is it not equal to this? Is it less than this? Is it greater than this? And that was where we stopped, which gets us a lot of comparisons, right? You get to find anything where something's equal to something else. But quite obviously, when I ask you to search for something in the general sense, you want to be able to do more than just equal to, not equal to, less than or greater than. There's clearly a need for more searching ability. And that's the driving force behind today's installment, really, is searching better. And that then gets us ready next time to transform data, which is the third big thing that JQ can do. So we can print it, query it, transform it. And so the transform is the final part of this journey. And that's, that's not for now. We're getting ourselves ready for that. <laughs> okay. What piece are we going to do today? So today is we're finishing off the querying. So at some extent, I'm, I'm slightly trying to mirror last time structure. So we're going to start by looking at some more things related to type, because there's a couple of functions in JQ to do with types, which are useful to know. And then we're going to move on to one new operator, which is going to save our bacon later in the show. And... Many, many times in reality, because the real world is full of very questionably formatted JSON. That is something that I have discovered uh, by pure accident. Our data set of Nobel laureates has some quirks, and that is very in keeping with what I find in the real world with my work hat on. There's a lot of quirky JSON out there. And then we're going to finish up by looking at some more powerful comparisons. So instead of just less than, greater than, or equal to, we are going to look at some other way, some other criteria we can give, and we're going to re-meet our best friend in the world, the regular expression, which is, of course, an amazing way of searching for things. 
Does it match this pattern? Yeah, it sort of smelled like we would have to end up there. Yeah, of course we did. Of course we did. So, <laughs> yes. But of course, I started by setting a challenge last time, which was intended to, because I knew last time was a heavy lift, I had basically intended to make sure that we had three questions which touch on each of the core concepts that I had hoped to try to get across. And I didn't expect necessarily for these to be easy, because JQ is, what was the phrase we like to use? Dense? Dense. JQ is as dense as the terminal was, and the terminal's denseness can be quite tricky. So, so these... I, I sent Bart a message before we started talking that I was really sad about the uh, challenges because I really like what I'm learning. I really like data. I really felt like I understood what he taught last week or two weeks ago, and I spent a ton of time, I mean, hours and hours, probably four hours, trying to do the first solution and I did not succeed and I did not get close to succeeding because of some fundamental gaps in what I understood. And I was sad because I really thought this was going to be fun. And I, I never even got to the second or third one, never even got to start him because I couldn't get past the first one. So um, we've talked a little bit. We've talked me off the ledge, I guess, is the way <laughs> of putting it, uh, before we got started. But uh, but I was bummed because I thought I was going to love this. And I, I did love trying. But towards the end, I was just flailing semicolons and commas and square brackets and I, I was asking Chat GPT for help. Bart, I tried to read the JQ documentation, which oh, is terrible, luck. by the way. Yes, it was it horrible. Not I even had, close to helping. I had to learn a lot of JQ before I could use the JQ documentation. It was not the JQ documentation is not a method of learning. It is a method of looking up what you already know. At best. Yeah, I can see that. One of the things I've said on on the NoSilicast is what I like about Chat GPT is I can describe in human form what I'm trying to trying to do, and then it'll give me the right wording of what I'm supposed to do. But what it answered with was nothing close to what you did. So we're going to pretend I didn't even listen to the entire episode last week when you tried to tell me how to solve this first one. Well, let's. I'm going to start off with some very general tips, actually. So the first thing is when you're building this up, don't try to build everything at once. I Be didn't. Okay, good. But that's I didn't. This, uh... Itty bitty little bites. Okay, good, because I sort of look at it as you start off with too much information and you're trying to filter it through multiple funnels to get less information out the other side and the less, you know you're done when the less contains only what you want and nothing more. So you start off with everything and you end up with only what you want and in between you may need to do some work. And so if you, right. write, the, if you write the JQ by, you know, you do one piece and you run it and you see the output and what you should see is too much and then you put a pipe and then you try to solve the next piece of the problem and build yeah, it up so that way we didn't actually talk about how to solve this but i'm going to start right in um the first question the first challenge bart gave us was what prize did friend of the no Silicast podcast dr andrea Giz win list the year category and motivation i can do pieces of that but I can't do all the year category motivation all in one get, fell swoop. And and the part I was stuck on was when we when we pipe one thing into the next thing into the next thing, we're kind of drilling down into the array laureates. Once a laureate gets exploded, and I'm down in there digging out the information about, for example, her motive, the motivation. I'm good. I can get that, but I can't get back up out of the array in order to pull out the year and, and category. I, d I don't know how to do that. I, I, that's where I got stuck. And the key is not backing out because you can't. The key is not going in so you don't have to. Okay. But I got so to that... dip in. I got to go in to get the motivation. You got to look in, but don't go in. Oh, so imagine you've okay. opened the door and you've had a look and you've decided, is this for me? No, it is not. Throw that one away, but don't step in because once you step in, the but door... I do need something in there. I got to go in and get the motivation later. Motivation's down None, in the right, in the right, but you want that later after you've thrown away all the Nobel prizes that are non Andreas. Okay, so let's step through the... it. Okay, yeah, okay. find the prize, and then when you have the prize, then pull out the three pieces of information I asked for. But get the prize. But first. how do I find the prize without looking in the door? 
Okay, well, let's do that. Well, no, you look in, don't step in. Look in, don't step in. Is the way my mental way of thinking about it. So let's start at the start. We have okay. a, we have a JSON data file that contains one dictionary with one top level key value pair named prizes, and the value of prizes is an array. So that is one unwieldy thing. So the first thing we mm-hmm. actually want to do is explode that. So we say Absolutely. dot prizes open square bracket close square bracket. So leaving I'm with, that, I'm with you so far, Bart. <laughs> perfect. This is important because on the other side of the pipe, what do we have? The other side of the pipe is now going to happen many times. Once for each element of the prizes array. So each time the next filter gets called, it is working on an entire dictionary that represents a full prize. So, so prizes the, zero, prizes one, prizes two, prizes three. Right. It's going to go through time, each one. Yes. But each time through, it's seeing exactly one of those. So each time through, the current, the, the current value being processed is a full dictionary that contains a year, a category, a key value pair called laureates that is itself an array of more dictionaries. And it might contain something else, but I don't remember off the top of my head. But there, that's... Uh, that's no, objects. Objects, not dictionaries. We call them dictionaries because we've been doing that since our JavaScript well, days. objects. But they're... Do, oh, did you say dictionaries? I'm sorry. I, I said dictionaries. You said okay. Sorry. Okay, I'm with you. Sorry. Objects, dictionaries, same thing. Got it. Yes. Yeah, no, we've been... I've been very careful not to use the word object because Jill will kill me. I've been very <laughs> consistent about that the whole way through. Okay. Okay, um, so so we're right. going through uh, a year category and laureates over and over and over again. Exactly. So that is what we now have. So after we pass that first pipe, we're now doing the, the second pipe in the chain once for every dictionary that represents a full prize. So we are now looking at the door of the full prize. So it contains our year, our category, and our array of laureates. And we want to throw away every prize that doesn't have at least one laureate with the surname Gez. Now, our first attempt to do this would be to put another pipe and to say dot laureates, open square brackets, close square brackets. And then we have then stepped into that array. And now the current thing being processed is a dictionary with a surname, a first name and a motivation and an ID, but let's ignore the ID. And we can very easily find the current thing with the surname of Gez. But mm-hmm. what's, what falls out of that pipe is now a laureate, not a Nobel right. Prize. Because we step, we exploded right. the Nobel Prize. We took the Nobel right. Prize and we blew it up. Right. That's what we got to not but we do. But how, how, how do, how do we not do that? Did you teach us not to? Yes, I did, because the, the entire reason that the three argument any function exists is to avoid having to step through the door. It lets us look through the door, but not step through the door. So inside our second pipe, right? So everything between the second, sorry, inside our second filter. So after the first pipe, between the first pipe and the second pipe is our, our second filter. It's a select, open bracket, a whole bunch of stuff, close bracket. Okay. Is, is select a function by any chance? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Did you tell us select was a function? Yes, I did. Because you went through the functions, but you only talked about not, and, and uh, you did the Booleans and stuff. And then I said that select was a function that processes oh, there you the go. input. Okay. And it takes one argument that is a filter. And if that filter returns true, then select passes the value to the next step in the pipe. And if that filter returns false, select silently swallows the current value. So that is how select reduces our number, our number of things we're processing, right? So we start off with once for every single prize, we run it through select and we say, if this criteria matches, you go on to the next chain the next process the next thing in the chain if this condition fails you evaporate into the ether you are destroyed so obviously at the end of that middle pipe there are far fewer nobel prizes left 
Because everyone that doesn't meet a criteria is evaporated into nothingness. Okay. So that is the point of select. So the question is, how do we decide which Nobel Prizes stay and which Nobel Prizes do not stay? Okay. So we need to write a condition that will be true when we have what we want. Now, we need to check our surname, not against one thing, but against many things. And that's why we use the any function. Because the any function checks one condition against many inputs. And if any of those are true, any returns true. Okay. So if she had won twice, for example, okay. that's why you want any? No. No. So what the thing we are searching is a Nobel Prize. It contains one year, one category, many laureates. If, no, it's got lots of categories. No. A specific Nobel Prize. A specific. You have taken the array of Nobel Prizes and broken them into multiple dictionaries, and every time we loop through, we are processing a single dictionary, which contains a year, a category, and an array of laureates. Okay. I think I see what you're saying. Right. So we are processing... And Nobel Prize. Okay. So there, there is a Nobel Prize for 2023 in chemistry. There is a Nobel Prize for 2023 in physics. Yes. Because when you look at that array okay. in the raw JSON file, you will see it's open curly bracket, some stuff, close curly bracket, comma, open curly bracket, some stuff. So each of those right, right. is a okay. separate dictionary. Okay. So the select is happening once for each dictionary and the question being asked is does this one dictionary i'm looking at meet a criteria if the answer is yes you continue if the answer is no you evaporate into the ether all right so we are and what you used was any at this yes. point and right. why wouldn't you want all like what if she'd won twice okay but any will catch twice if I okay. give you five playing cards and I say, do oh. any, are any of these black? If two of them are black, it's still black. That's what any means. Right. But, but I would answer yes. <laughs> I wouldn't well, which tell is you true. Two cards. Which is true, right? Or, yeah. So any answers yes or no, true or false. So, right. Oh, and the true or false is what tells the select to move, send the answer now to the next, through the next pipe. Exactly. Okay. Right. So we are interested okay. if any of the laureates in the one prize we are looking at have the surname Gez. Okay. So the any function in its two argument form, the first thing you tell it is, what do you want me to explode so that I can look at many things? And then a semicolon, what condition do I apply to each of the things? So we are saying... Take the laureates array, and for each one, look at the surname. Is it equal to Gez? If any of the surnames are Gez, the any function returns true. Okay. Which means the entire so, Nobel Prize has gotten a true on the select. And the select then passes the prize, not true? It exactly. doesn't pass true. It passes exactly. That is the function. Select either prizes the original thing or nothing. So if select, okay. if the condition works out to true, the entire prize gets to pass. Okay. And you said select has one argument, and the one argument in this case is the any function. Yes. And the any function has two arguments. One is where do you want me to look? Yep. And then what do you want me to look for? Yep. Okay. So in English. If any of the laureates have a surname Gez, the entire prize gets to continue to the next stage. So even though we did explode laureates. But we'd exploded it inside the any, right? So at the very top level, right? At the top level, we are still okay. in, we are, the select function is working on the whole prize. Okay. You did not do an example that covered this, by the way. It's the I, last thing you say, but you don't have an example that, that, 
I do actually because goes... I show it not working because we can't see what Marie Curie got her prize for. And then we show, oh yeah, and this is actually what Marie Curie got her prize for. We explicitly do it because otherwise we can't tell why she got her prize. First time we do it, we just get told Marie Curie, Marie Curie, Pierre Curie, and we don't know why they got their prizes. And the second time we do it, okay. we see the two prizes come out. You know, I looked at that. I read your show notes at least six times, and I did. I still didn't get that from it, that this is... This, to me, looked like we exploded it, went drove down inside, because what we returned was stuff that was inside uh, laureates. It wasn't up above laureates. I thought once we exploded it, we were inside it. And right, I'm not sure we, how I know when I'm not inside it. Well, it's... It, right, so at the top level, what is the select working on? What is to the left? The select is the one thing in that second filter in the chain. So it is receiving whatever the filter before it produced. So prizes, open square bracket, close bracket, is sending a full prize dictionary. So select is working on the prize. Whatever happens mm -hmm. inside select is inside select. Whatever's going to fall out of the other end here is based on what select received. So select will either pass exactly what it got in or nothing. So what it got in is the okay. full prize. So either the full prize goes through or nothing goes through. Okay. Yeah. I, all the words that you're saying, you did, I, I'm remembering pieces of that. <laughs> I also so, said it was very difficult to keep your head around it because I'm asking you to imagine what the current value is. And that takes some getting used to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, <laughs> we have successfully uh, uh, exploded prizes. We've gone, we've, using the select, we've gone through every prize and looked for any laureates with surname Gez. But yeah. now you're going to pipe it through and you're going to do some more stuff. Right. But I think it gets easier after this. It does get easier. But before we go further, what, can you run that without the remaining pipes? Just run that dot prizes, pipe, select, close bracket, close bracket. Just run that bit of it and then see what we have. I can. Oh, I, oh, come on. Can I select the right window? I believe you can. Whether you shall, I don't know. No, not with the way it's... No, I've got to get some quotes and There's stuff and add the stuff at the end. There we the go. Bracket and the okay. Name of the file. So, yes, I have run that. And it came out with the prize... Uh, the 2020 physics prize, but it's got Penrose and Ginzel in there along with Andrea. Right. So, but that is the entire prize dictionary. And so now we've, we're left with a much simpler problem. I just wanted to know, what did I want to know? I wanted to know the year, the category, and the motivation was the little curveball I threw in. So if we want to get the oh, year. No, the motivation was the easy part, Bart. Because I kept being inside there. I knew what the motivation was. It was the category and the year that was hard because that was up above. Well, but now that, now that we're, we're not inside there yet, right? We're not inside there yet. So now the category, now the motivation is actually a curveball. So if we want to get the year, that's easy. We pipe dot year. And that will just tell mm -hmm. us the year. The comma, and also with a comma. Bing, bing, bing. And also the category. Great. That gives mm -hmm. us two out of three. And we know we have an and also, because I've told you I want a third thing. So we know what the next thing is going to be, comma. But then the question becomes, what comes after the comma? Well, what we need to do now is we need to actually go in, not look in, we need to go in to the laureates, get just the one for Andrea, and then get just the motivation. So we need to... Use brackets to say everything I'm about to do here is one little piece. Is that thing. third thing. Is that yeah, third yeah. thing, right? So we wrap it all in brackets. Mm -hmm. And then we start and we say dot laureates, open square bracket, close brackets. So we are now actually exploding the laureates from the one prize that is Andrea's prize. Right? Because that's all that's left now. Okay. So what's in here now is, is Penrose, Genzel, and, and Gez. Exactly. And then we pipe that to select. And select is now being handed a laureate. It's no longer being handed a prize. It's now being handed a laureate because we've exploded the laureates. And then it's looking mm -hmm. in with the simple one argument version of select, which means it's going to go through its input and just look for 
a simple property dot surname double equals guess, right? Because we don't have to go any, we don't have to dig deep into this laureates anymore. We're in the laureates. They only have names, right? And motivations. So there's, there's nothing deep here to go in. So we just say, give me the surname equals guess. Ah, but what you've really done, you've selected. So you're looking. So there were three laureates. And only one of those three is going to make it through the gauntlet. So the fr- who, what right. order are they in? So who, who's, who's first in the array? It's, it's, it's Penrose, Gonzalez, and then Gez. Okay. So the first time that that select happens, it looks and it goes, dot surname, double equals Gez, Penrose. False. He evaporates. Penrose is gone. Poof. Mm-hmm. Second time through the array, it's whoever the second name is, evaporates. Poof. Third time through, Gez. Yes. So now, so that at that point, what is what is the input to the next pipe? Is it that that third object inside the uh, the prize that was physics for twenty twenty? Yes, because dot laureates has exploded into its separate dictionaries for each winner, and so we've thrown two of those dictionaries away, and so we are now left with the dictionary with first name Andrea, surname Gez. And the motivation is what we really care about. So when you so, say select dot surname double equals Gez, with this one prize, the 2020 physics, you've got one prize, it's one element in this giant array uh, of prizes. When you say select dot surname Gez, how does it know to take that whole object? I thought it okay. would have just surname Gez at that point. Okay, no. So that is the condition, not what, that is how you want to look, not what you want to get back. So what you get back is whatever was to the left of that pipe, right? So you're piping something into select. So what is to the left of that pipe? It is. You haven't said select any. You've said select surname. Correct. You said I want surname Gez. No. So all you should no. have is surname Gez. No. That's not saying what you want. That's saying what the condition is. is select. It, so it must be saying any object or dictionary. Sorry, any dictionary within laureates within this little piece of laureates that has Gez in it, returned the entire dictionary. Yes. What, weird. What, it is weird, but that is, that is the fundamental leap. Select returns the exact thing it was given, all of it, or nothing. So we are exploding the laureates. So the thing select is given is a dictionary with the keys surname, first name, motivation, and ID. So the only thing that can come out of that select is that dictionary or nothing. Whether or not it gets to come out is what's determined by the condition inside the parentheses. It's only saying whether or not it passes. It's not saying what, it's not filtering. It's not extracting information. It's gating the information. Either you all get through or nothing gets through. Hmm. Right? It's a condition, not a select, not, not a... Not a cherry picking. It's it's the condition for letting it all through. Yeah, that's 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 odd. It is odd, and I think that's what's caught you up. I think that is, we have now hit the nugget of what has tripped you well, up. No, the no, that's way. not. No, I was stuck long before this part. <laughs> that's not, that's not where okay, they, well, this is pretty. There's a whole other penny still floating, but I I wasn't even this far in. Remember, I I I couldn't get to this point to where I would be confused. I was not it's, yet it's, confused on this. It is the same penny. It may be a penny with multiple sides, so maybe it's not a penny. Maybe it's some sort of a die that's falling in something, the six sides, but it is, they are very, very connected. I guess it's sort of, yeah, I guess it's sort of similar. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. We're done with question number one in uh, 28 minutes, 29 minutes. Bart yeah, asked me up front whether maybe this will be a two parter. I think it will be. <laughs> Right, but it's important, right? So the reason we do the challenges is so that we can have these deep conversations because it was easy to write that, but actually the fundamental questions are deep. There is a lot going on here. So I don't think it's time, time misspent. I think it's time okay. very, very well No, spent. no, no. I, I mean, I, whether it was or not, I needed to have this conversation. There I hope go. the next one's easier. I believe it is actually. So... The next question is, how many laureates were there for each prize? And I want the year, the category, and the number of winners. So again, we're going to start with, well, we need to get each prize one by one. So we're going to start our train of work by exploding out the dot prizes dictionary into its 
little pieces. Sorry, the dot price is arranged with pieces. So arriving at the next step, well, we want the year. Well, every prize has a year, so we can just take it. Dot year, mm-hmm. comma, and also we want the category. Great, that's easy. Dot category, comma, and also. Now we want how many winners were there? So we now need to actually count the length of the laureate's array. So the answer we now want as our third and also is a length. And I've told you that the length function expects to be passed an array, so we say dot laureate's pipe length. And we just have to wrap it in brackets so that that whole, so that that whole thing becomes our third round, round and bracket. also. Roundy brackets. So we're grouping those together. So, so I, have, I have a couple of problems here. <laughs> okay. Why is dot laureate's not exploded? When because you do laureate's dot, or dot laureate's pipe length. Okay, so the length function, by definition, needs to receive as its input an array. It, not a piece of an array, the whole array. So if you explode the array, you do not have an array, you have ah, pieces of an array. Maybe you need to define explode, Bart. Okay, so... I thought explode meant open it up and let me look at it. No, open it up means... Okay, so remember what I said was that each filter has one or more inputs and produces one or more outputs. And the number of outputs can be different to the number of inputs. So when you explode, when you have a filter that explodes an array, the input is one array. And the explode square bracket square bracket means I am giving you many outputs. So the next filter in the chain happens in parallel. Not in series, in parallel. Once for everything okay. in the array. Now, okay, the length but function... No, but it's not an array anymore. It's not an array. You tell me, because I, I can't ask the length of it once it's exploded, so I, it can't be an array anymore. Which is why I'm saying don't explode it. If you want the length right. of an array, right. you do not want pieces of an array. You want an array. Okay. So tell me, so this now, in saying this more quickly in one piece, dot prizes, double square bracket, pipe it, uh, dot year and also dot category, comma, uh, and then open roundy brackets dot laureate's pipe length, close yes. roundy brackets. So that, what do you expect dot laureate's pipe length to return? The it's, number its input of is all of, is all, the number of laureates in what? Okay, so remember. By year? By year? Is that okay, what you mean? So, no, no, go back. What is to the left of the pipe? There's two pipes. Okay, the main top-level pipe. We have dot prizes, prizes, explode, pipe. Mm -hmm. So everything from that pipe until the end of that string is working on, is happening once for every element inside the prizes array. So there is a dictionary with a year, a category, and laureates at the first element in the array. And there's one in the second element of the array, and there's one in the third element. So that, everything from dot year to the end happens once for every single prize. So the first time through okay. the loop, the okay. year is going to be 2003, 23, the category is whatever's first in the list, and then the Can array of laureates is, okay, so how many laureates are there in, in, in the first prize? Three. Okay, so then would laureates three. would be three. Yeah, it's that array of laureates okay. that's being checked. And then it does it again for the next prize, and again for the next prize, and again for the next prize, and again for the next prize. And so okay, you're so, get... so it's showing, it's showing, I'm looking at the bottom of the answer, but it says yeah. uh, oh, 1901 literature one, 1901 peace two, 1901 physics one, 1901 medicine one. So that's one person won the medicine prize in 1901. Yeah. Okay. Right, because it's happening once for every okay. prize. So this explanation we're having here is not in the show notes. So I'm I'm wondering what we're gonna. I, I, this, I will this be asking rephrase. this again because I won't be able to. This is a to, rephrase of last week's show notes. The, the text of this is last time show notes. We're saying it in a different way. So I, I, maybe I, maybe I'm misunderstanding you. Well, I'm just saying when I look at these answers, I'm not going to know why. If I, when I go back to these show notes, but because you say it's in the other show notes, but I'm telling you, Bart, I read it and read it and read it. I, I believe you, but I didn't get it. 
at all. So uh, I understand it right at this moment. If I know to look at this moment in time in the audio, but I need to understand it again. So uh, I don't know how to okay. say it differently to how I said it last time is, is the problem I'm having. I wonder if I could put notes to sections or something in there to say, look back at this piece, but maybe that's my problem. All right. What's, what's question number three? Okay. So the, the, the last question then is, well, so we know, because we've just done it, that sometimes there's three winners and sometimes there's two winners and sometimes there's one winner. So I wonder which prizes were won by one person who was good enough to win it all by themselves. So which prizes were won by just one person? Who, who got to win? You know, which prizes were given outright? And what we would like to know is the year, the category, the first name, the last name and the motivation. So you won it outright. Okay, so who were you? When did you get it? What did you get it for? So as always, we start by exploding out our prizes. So the next piece of the chain is going to happen once for every single prize. And what we're interested in to decide whether or not the prize continues to the next step in the process is, do you have exactly one winner? Right, that is our, that is our criteria for pr- continuing. We start off with all the prizes and we only want the ones that have right. exactly one winner. So we have a select. What is the condition we want? Well, we want the laureate's pipe to length to be exactly one. But you put a question mark on laureate suggesting don't look at the null ones, but the null ones would pass as not having a length of one. They would. So why do you have is... to be specific? Because otherwise you would get an error because the length function will receive an input that it doesn't like. It will receive null and it doesn't like calculating the length of null. So, well, but null is, d- doesn't meet the criteria of length double equal one. So it would be false and it would, just, it would just skip right over it. No, based on the documentation, the length function insists you either give it n- genuinely nothing or you give it an array. If you give it null, null is not an array. Null is a value the length function will throw an error if you give it null. So why not? um, Oh, was it only laureates that are missing, but aren't there years there's no prize? Or did the prize go somewhere, just not to any laureates? The the prize goes, the prize exists as a dictionary, but it contains no key value pair with the key laureates. Okay. So putting the question mark on the prizes wouldn't do you any good. It would not because the prize, the the prize is a dictionary. It, and right. it contains a year and a category. And then it right. doesn't contain right. laureates. Okay. Got you, got you. Okay, so that's why you have to put the question mark after laureates. Yes. Do, I've got to remember a question I want, but I don't want to interrupt this <laughs> any more than I already have. So we've got dot prizes, piped. We want to select dot laureates with a question mark, pipe equals uh, pipe to length, double equals one. So at this so point... Laureates, in- laureates pipe length. It's pipe. I thought it's just... Mm. The length function That's... works on the current input. So how do we give it current input? Okay. We okay. pipe something to it. Okay. So after that select function, what has happened is we started off with all the Nobel Prizes, and now all that is left are the prizes with a laureate's array of length one. So we now have the full dictionaries for each of our answers. But I wanted you to get a bit more specific and hand me the year the category, the surname, sorry, the first name, the surname and the motivation. So we know we want the year. So dot year, comma, and also dot category, comma, and also. Now, I want the first name, but laureates is an array. But I now know for a fact, because I've proven it, that it is an array of length one. So how do I get the first name from the first laureate. I say laureates, open square bracket zero, close square bracket dot first name. Uh, oh, because the next time through, it's a different laureate. It's a different laureate. And it will also be in position zero. Yeah, exactly. What would happen if you just said laureate dot first name instead of laureate square bracket zero, mm. close square bracket dot first name? Null, because laureates is an array, not a dictionary. Uh-huh. So it just... Otherwise, like, you'd you have to loop through it or something again. Right, right but we're looping through but a thing we don't need one. to because we know it as one. Okay. Yeah, we, we just want the first name from the first element in the array. Okay. And we want the surname 
from the first element in the array. And also, we want the motivation from the first element in the array. And that okay. is our answer. That one actually makes more sense than the other two. One of the things that bothers me about all of this is that it appears that you have to understand everything about your data set before you start doing any of this. So when I started this, I said, I don't know what the data set looks like. I don't know where, what, in, I know it's prizes because Bart's been saying it over and over again in his example, but I don't know what the structure is below that. And I, I didn't, I knew I could open up the file and maybe pretty print it or something, but I wanted to know, how do I find out what is the structure of the data I have? And I, I had trouble finding a way to do that. I invented one. I just said, JQ, uh, dot prizes zero, Nobel prizes dot JSON. Just show me what the first one is. Yeah. How do you know, like, that way. How do you know that you have to put a question mark in? You only know because it's screwed up, because you got a yes. null. Correct. Yeah. And that is the only way you know that is when your data well, misbehaves. Either you scroll through all the data. Yeah, by probably not. printing it, or you deal with problems when they arise. And you sh so we have we have a few times in the show notes. Like last time we had in the last episode, we had an interesting example where we first discovered, and I say we. I, while writing the show notes, first discovered there are not always laureates because I got an error. So I then wrote a JQ query to show me all the prizes where the, the, the laureates is null. And that listed out all of those prizes. And that query was in the show notes as an example of how we find out which prizes don't have laureates. And that then showed us the structure, pretty printed. And I was like, okay, so that's what my data looks like. And then I adjusted. I feel like you go in blind to start with, though. I stumble around in the dark. Yeah. yeah. And then pretty print. But I mean, it seems I like want. there ought to be a way to tell me what does it look like. But I didn't want to I didn't want to look at this thousands of line long JSON file. The whole point of this is if I mean, if it's short enough that I can scroll through it, then I don't need to do any of this nonsense. I can go, oh, there's Andrea. Uh, right, right. But it, picking out element zero is, is big your data. answer. But OK. That is your answer. And the other thing is at every point in the pipe, you can just stop, let it print out what it currently has, and then go deeper. Right? Every time that you're meeting a pipe, just stop there, run it, and see what's coming out at that point in the chain. And then the next time you put a pipe, you're going to filter it down further and filter it down further. So print as right. you go. Right. Again, back to the problem is I didn't know, I couldn't get into the first part of it. I, I was stuck at the beginning. Okay. All right, we're ready to start new stuff, Bart. <laughs> we're definitely going to have to split this. That's a long scroll bar coming up. Okay. Um, how are we? Where are we now? It is now 22 minutes. We're 42 minutes. minutes in. So we're 42 minutes in. We should, let's go like 15 minutes and see where we are. Okay. So we, we, spent a lot of, we spent a lot of time last time talking about data types, right? So... JQ is a language for querying JSON, so we discussed the fact that it has inherited, very cleverly, JSON's approach to types. So there are strings, numbers, booleans, arrays, what it calls objects, what we call dictionaries, and the special value null. And one of the things you can do to try to explore these things is there is a function named type, which will tell you the type as a string. So if you pipe something to type, it will give you back one of the following six strings, null, boolean, number, string, array, or object. And so you can use that to probe what something is. Or you could use it inside your queries, say select whatever, and the condition could be type double equals number to say, basically, unless this thing is a number, don't pass it on to the next element in my chain. So select can be thought of as an if. Yes. If you find this, pass then pass through. it along. If that works Otherwise, for you, yes. Along. OK, OK. The other way to look at this is a filter. So it either goes through or it doesn't go through. But either way, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Right. It, call it an if, if you like. Yeah. A conditional pass. Yeah. yeah whatever whatever yeah. works for your brain. So that is, how do I tell what it is? The type function okay. will tell you its type. Great. That's useful. Uh, but we also know that all of our equality and stuff is done through strict typing. So the string 
42 and the number 42 are not the same because one of them's a string and one of them's a number. So the double equals operator will say, nope, you're not the same. So it would actually be darn useful to be able to convert from one to the other. And that is also true when we have operators like less than, greater than. So if you give less than a pair of numbers, it will do a numeric check. But if you give less than a pair of strings, it will do an alphabetic check. And in alphabet land, Mm -hmm. 23 is greater than 2001. Because alphabetically, it comes after 2001. Because 23 Mm -hmm. is greater than 20. So having strings, having numbers as strings, and then doing a comparison will cause logic to cease to exist. And we have this in our data set because our years are all strings. Our entire JSON file of Nobel laureates is full of string numbers for the years. Now, if you're always dealing in four digit numbers, the fact that it's alphabetic doesn't make any difference. But if you try to say, what are all the Nobel prizes after the year four? Well, that's going to do very odd things because actually it thinks none of them are after the year four, even though they're all really a long way after the year four. So we need to be able to convert these things. And thankfully, JQ provides us two very sensibly named functions, two number and two string. And they will take the input and they will convert it as they describe. Or they will throw an error if you give them something they don't like. So if we say 2001 pipe to string double equals the string 2001, we will get a true. Because the number has now been converted to a string, and so now it does pass our strict type check. So let me remind myself, uh, what you've written says JQ minus N, and then you've done this to string thing. Uh, mm-hmm. The minus n means it, don't expect an input. There's nothing Perfect. coming in from the left hand side. Yes, okay. there is. There is no input it's here. Like we are null basically... for some reason. It's. I think it's short for minus minus null input. Okay. But minus okay. n is easier. Yeah. Okay, so JQ minus n, and then you've got inside single quotes because we single quote all this stuff. Uh, open parentheses two thousand one pipe two string. Close parentheses. So that's become one thing now. Mm-hmm. That's the input double equals quote 2001. That would be true because we turn 2001 into double quote 2001, which is a string. So it's true. Okay. Yeah. So we can wow. say we've turned 2001 into 2001. Okay. And we've compared it to 2001 and they are indeed the same. If we take the number 2001 and we double equals it to open our bracket, the string 2001 pipe to number, and then close that off, we also get true, because now we're comparing a number to a number, and that is, yeah, those are indeed the same. Uh, If we take the string 2001 and we pipe it to number, and we say, are you greater than the string 23 piped to number, we now get the much more sane answer that 2001 is indeed greater than 23, because we've converted them both to numbers before we did the comparison. And then we get the expected true. Okay. And if you try to convert something that is not a numeric string to number, JQ will get very cranky with you. So if you take the string waffles and you pipe it to number, you get invalid numeric literal error. Because waffles is not a numeric literal. Yeah, it does make sense. The other thing we get out of the box is a bunch of, I call them select-like functions. They will take the input and they will just check its type. They won't check to see whether it's equal to something else. They'll just check its type. And if the type is within, is what it's supposed to be, it gets to pass through. Otherwise, it vanishes into the ether. And these are, does exactly what it says on the tin functions. So they're named for what they filter. So to test these, we're going to use a new data file called sampledata.json that contains a massive array of lots of random things. It is an array that contains null, true, minus one, 
0, 11, 3.1415, the string 4, 2, the string waffles, an empty array, the array dogs, comma, cats, an empty dictionary, and the dictionary apples, colon, 12, pairs, colon, 3. So that is a nice sampling of all of our different data types that Jason... You just swept some data up off the floor, or shook out the vacuum cleaner of data, got it. Yeah. So the question becomes... How do we get only the things that match a certain type easily, right? We could put it through select. So we could say select open bracket dot pipe type double equals string. And that would be a big select and we could do it, right? Because we know that the type function will convert our type to a string and then we can do a double equals. But we don't have to. We just get these free functions that do that job as a shortcut. And the first of them is nulls. Whatever you pipe to nulls, if it is null, it goes through. If it is not null, it vanishes into the ether. So if we say jq explode our input, so dot open square bracket close bracket pipe nulls, and we tell it sample data dot json, it will take that array, and once for everything in the array, it will run it through the nulls function, and all that will pass is things that are really null. So the entire array becomes one output null. Everything else has been filtered away. Very boring one. What would it have? Well, okay, so the way you typed it in here, it says hash null. So it's not actually going to say hash. It's just that you did that because that's a comment. So it's going to say null. What if the second element in that array was null? Would it have said null comma null? No, because it literally... Well, no, because you notice it's not null comma comma blank, 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 blank. It literally, like the select function, it is literally gone. The stuff that is that doesn't meet the criteria is gone. No, but I'm saying, what if you had two? If you had two null in your array, oh, it would give me two. It would give me two outputs: null followed by another null. Okay, that's what I asked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, so nulls, nulls is kind of boring. It's like, okay, give me all the nulls. I guess you could count them, right? You could, you could say pipe it to nulls and then count them, or something. I don't know. It's a very odd thing to want to do, but hypothetically, right? What's much more interesting is the opposite of nulls. It's the values, which is everything that isn't null is a value. So the values filter will throw away the nulls, but let everything else pass through. So when we take exactly the same structure, we say explode our input array, which is our big glop of every data type Bart could think of, and we pipe that to values, what comes out is true, minus one, zero, eleven, three point one four one five forty two waffles, empty array, the array dogs and cats, the empty dictionary, the dictionary apples twelve, pairs three. The only thing that didn't come through was null, because null is not a value. Well, null came through as oh, oh, okay, I see. Yeah. So you don't list value as one, values as one of the select like functions. Oh, it is the second one. Okay, there it is. Okay. The next so one is, values just means everything that's not null. Got it. Yeah. Okay. The next one is Booleans. It only lets through true and false. So in our data set, that means only true comes out. The other okay. one is numbers. Numbers lets through minus one, zero, 11, 3.15, It does not let through the string for two. Because that makes is sense. a string, not a number. Well, it makes sense, you say. But it's important to point that out because I'm not sure that's obvious. Well, it doesn't mean you're not. I'm, it doesn't mean I'm not going to look at quote forty two and see the number forty two. Right, exactly. So it's it's worth pointing out. Uh, yeah. There is also a function named strings, which unsurprisingly will give us four two and waffles from our big glop of data. Another very useful one is arrays. It will give us all of the arrays. In other words, the empty array and the array dogs cats, and it does return the empty array. The other one we have is objects, which gives us all the dictionaries. It gives us the empty dictionary and the dictionary apples 12, pairs 3. And then another interesting one is iterables. It gives us everything that you could loop over. In other words, arrays and dictionaries. So basically iterables are things that have more than one thing in them. And the opposite of an iterable is a scalar. A scalar is a single valued thing. So the scalars are null, true, minus 1, 0, 11, 3.1415, the string 4, 2, and the string waffles. I the, don't like that. Redefining like the that. word scalar. No. 
Yeah, it's a programmer's definition, I guess. It's quite common within programming languages, but it is a programmer's definition of the word. You know, I can see why the physicist, it, the engineer... It's supposed to mean it has magnitude, not direction. It doesn't have <laughs> anything to do with... It. It's like... Ah, I don't it's like also that. a one-dimensional vector. If, which in this case it no. is. Well, well one-dimensional meaning not having direction. A dot? Well, in math... It's the opposite a, of a vector... Or... Yeah, exactly. It has one. It's one a vector dimension. as direction and magnitude. Yeah. So what? Um, what would happen if you put in waffles, not in quotes? It would give an error because that is not valid JSON. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Um. Okay. So the next thing I said we would have on our menu today is one new operator that exists, and this operator exists for the sole reason that everyone's JSON is dirty. Dirty data is the norm. <laughs> And it's not always bad, dirty data. Sometimes it's efficiency. But the alternate operator lets you say, do this. And if that doesn't work because it doesn't exist, do this instead. Which is <laughs> very common to want. So very common examples are, there are data structures. Um, this is very common in Active Directory, where you could have one phone number. Everybody might not know what Active Directory is, Bart. <sighs> It, okay. I only know because I worked in a corporate Microsoft world. It's a it's a directory of the users in a system, and there are there there is a, a thing equivalent to that inside your Mac called LDAP. But anyway, it is a bunch of it's a it's a giant big dictionary describing every person in an organization. And if a person has one phone number, then LDAP or Active Directory will give you back a string when you query it. If you have two phone numbers, it will give you back an array of strings. It doesn't give you back an array of one string if you have one phone number. It says, oh, it's just too much effort. I'm going to give you one phone number. So that means that you're constantly and continuously dealing with the possibility of this could be a string or it could be an array. And so you always have these two possibilities flip-flopping inside your head. So that's a very common approach that you'll see in lots of places. A multi-valued attribute comes as a string or an array of strings. The other one we have is you may simply have keys that are optional. Some, some users have a smart card. Some users don't. That entire key could be optional, so it may not exist. In our data set, a Nobel Prize where there were no winners has no laureates array. So the laureates array does exist sometimes and doesn't exist other times. But when the laureates array doesn't exist, there's actually a different thing that exists. It's the string overall motivation. So that's actually a really good candidate for the alternative operator because either you have laureates or you have an overall motivation. So that's a particularly nice example. So the way the operator works, so the operator, aha, you're going to love this. You're going to absolutely love this. The operator so. is slash slash, which your brain, because you've grown up in JavaScript world, thinks means comment. No. It means alternative. It's going to drive hmm. you absolutely mad because you're going to look at people's code on GitHub and you're going to think, oh, it's just a comment. They've commented it out. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. It means Alternate. Well, we know JSON doesn't have comments, though. We do know that. Um, annoyingly. <laughs> I know. Very annoyingly. So the way it works is that it is an operator, so it has something on its left and something on its right. If the thing... So when you have the slash slash, the very first thing that happens is whatever is to the left gets done. And that will produce either null... Sorry, that will produce a value, right? Whatever is to the left is going to have a value. If that value is null or false, then the null or false are evaporated into non-existence, and whatever is to the right is evaluated, and that answer is the output. So what that means in effect is, try what's on the left. If that gives you anything that's not false or null, then the thing on the right never happens. If the thing on the left gives you false or null, do the thing on the right. So it's based, it is kind of a cheap person's if else. Right. So yeah. either the thing on the left or the thing what, on the right. What's still bothering me is uh, how do you know that this is happening inside your data 
The only way you know is by it not working. Right, and then you can query your data and just look at the data. So explode the dot prizes and look at it. And or, scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. Or put it through and, a select and put in the criteria. So you're saying, well, I think sometimes that we don't have a laureates array. So then you select dot laureates double equals null. And then all that will come out of that pipe is all of the Nobel Prizes where there is a null laureate. And then you can see the data. So you can use JQ to explore your data. You should describe what your uh, your code says there. because Well, make I haven't even gotten to my code yet. So you asked me the question. Okay. I was answering your question rather than yeah. trying to get onto my example. Okay. So if you don't... Right, yeah, so you run into an error. So then you can use JQ to figure out why you've run into an error by using the select to look for things that are null or whatever. Right? So you actually can use JQ to answer the questions about the data. Which I'm not sure the answer you were hoping for me to give I, you. I think you have, no, because you have to know what you're looking for in order to query for it. Right, like, but you I don't can know look why for null. Failed. Well, it's going to tell you null. It's going to tell you null in the error. So then you're going, okay, well, what is it? So this failed because it's saying that the Can you query are, for null? Double equals null, yeah. That is a condition okay. that will work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my example of the alternate operator is to, I, so for every prize, either there are laureates or there is a reason there are no laureates, which in terms of our actual data structure is either there is a dot overall motivation, which is the reason there are no laureates, or there's an array of laureates. And so what I would like to print out is the number of winners or the reason there are none. It seems like a valid thing to do. Either show me how many the winners there were or why there were no winners. And so to do that, we take our dot prizes and we explode it out and then we pipe it into the alternate operator. To the left, we have dot overall motivation. So if there is an overall motivation, whatever is to the right will never happen. So on the years where there are no prizes, it will just tell us why. Most years do have a prize. So most of the time, the thing on the left is going to evaluate to null which means the thing on the right is going to happen instead, which is inside brackets dot laureates pipe length. So give me the number of laureates. And so the output is going to be one, two, three. There was no prize because of World War I. Four, five, one. There was no prize because of World War II. Whatever, whatever the motivations are. The overall motivations. Okay. The... This is interesting, and the reason I'm pausing as I'm listening to you is it's almost like this cause this this uh, what what is this thing called again? The alternate operator is almost like it undoes this concept of I'm going to take everything and send it through if it meets my criteria. Otherwise, I'm going to vaporize it. In this case, it's going no, 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 no. Don't vaporize it. Give me something different if you yeah. don't meet that that filter. Yeah, because sometimes you want to fall back to something else and sometimes you want it to evaporate. So if you wanted to evaporate, you just say dot laureates question mark and then all of the ones that don't have a laureates would evaporate. But what if we actually do want to do something when there are no, when there are no laureates? Right? And that's what the alternate is for, right? If the answer is I want to do this or this, well, your alternate operator gives you a shorthand for do this or this. Very right, powerful right. shorthand. You're, you're your example makes me want to write more queries, though, and that and that's a good thing because mm. uh, what his so he said uh, prizes explode it pipe it to dot overall motivation alternatively give me dot laureate slash uh, pipe to length, and so what we see is three one 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 three 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 so these are all the ones where there was a no there were laureates so it says for contributions to our understanding the evolution of the universe and Earth's place in the cosmos well okay but like. Who, who won that? What was it? The next one talks about laser physics. It's like, well, wait a minute. You had something that it was a contribution for, but we don't know who it's for. I need to know more. I, it makes me want to run the queries more. Well, good, because that's where the and also operator comes in, right? Because you can use that then to, to break out things more um, and give you your desired more information. Um, so, yeah. Now, this is a point where we can continue or not your choice. As the host? Well, it looks like, uh, how much more do you think we have here? We are in an hour. I think... I s I'd i like us to... call it here. This Okay. You want to do one more? Mm, if we're, no, if we're, if we're not going to do both... So basically, we're now jumping into more advanced searching. So we're either going to do our searching, which is actually just two ways of searching. 
So it's whether or not okay. something contains something and whether and regular expressions. Well, based on the fact that I've had a little internet glitch here, um, I'm nervous enough. It's probably the fact that it's sprinkled in Los Angeles that I lost my my internet connection for a minute there. That I think we should probably cut it. You know, we did have a rule before that that the challenge solutions were so long that we would make them separate episodes. But we've been barreling along so quickly and having easy examples. I think we we didn't do that. So I think we should tease this out right here and hold this okay. one for next time. Well, this is the perfect place to do that then, so we shall do that. Uh, Sorry, listeners. (laughs) I have no idea when you'll be hearing the rest of this, because, well, yeah, because it's it's the silly season, so goodness only knows when we'll make this happen. But, uh, well, the show notes are written, so I can record any (laughs) time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, well, um, until next time, actually, and anyone who didn't succeed in the challenges, I guess maybe now is a good time to go back and do them again. Don't cheat, don't look at the answer. <laughs> Try to redo them, um, because it is good practice to get into the habit of understanding quite what is going on when you explode things and pipe things from one filter to another, because that's the key to it all. So anyway, until next time, whenever it is, happy computing. If you learn as much from BART each week as I do, I'd like you to go over to lets-talk.ie and press one of the buttons over there to help support him. He does 98% of the work here. I'm just the stooge that listens to him and asks the dumb questions. If you go over to lets-talk.ie, you can support him on Patreon, you can donate via PayPal, or you can use one of his referral links. I really hope you'll go over and help him out. In the meantime, you can contact me at Podfeet or check out all of the shows we do over there over at podfeet.com. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.